Here we are together again on the radio. I have seen a number of articles recently about women complaining that men don't call them back. I, I can't believe women are not getting the message. You know, women say, well, we went on a date and it seemed to go really well. At the end of the day, he told me he'd call me, and uh, next morning I got about 7.30 and 7.45, and I haven't heard from him yet. Or they complain that he didn't call a day or two or three later or even a week later. And ladies, there are two possible reasons for this. The most likely one is he just doesn't like you. He spent that evening with you, and listening to you was more than he could bear. But clearly he was trying to be polite and do the right thing. So he persevered with the evening. When the evening was over, he didn't want confrontation. Didn't want to tell you all the reasons why he had no intention of ever calling you again. So, just like in L.A., people say, let's do lunch. You never have any intention of calling you. If you live in SoCal, you know that's how we are. We just think you're expected to say that, so we say what you want to hear. Uh, same thing with this. We say, I'll call you. I'll call you, though, uh, does not have an expiration date on it. I'll call you could be tomorrow. It could be a week from tomorrow. It could be a month from tomorrow. It could be six months from now after I've had too much to drink and it's late. And I would, uh, at the very least, like to hear your voice. The other thing is that I tell guys don't call. Don't, or, or say you'll call and then don't. Because women are far more interested in guys who are unreliable, unpredictable jerks than they are in the reliable, dependable types. Oh, sure, they don't want to marry guys like that. But that's okay, because I'm not looking to get married, you see? No, but the, the, the guys they have sex with are the unreliable, undependable jerks. So if you tell a woman, oh, I'll call you, and then you call her tomorrow morning at 7.30, and then you have flowers on her desk by 9, she either dismisses you out of hand, or she starts thinking that uh, the biological time clock is ticking, and Poindexter would make a perfect husband, perfect sperm donor, donor and human wallet. I, I say it's never a good idea to call her back within a week of seeing her. It's just never a good idea. It puts you behind the eight ball. What you want to do as a man is lower her self-esteem, make her question herself, increase her sense of insecurity. Women, whether they like to admit it or not, whether they think they are 21st century women, or they don't, let's face it, women are defined by their desirability to men. That's how they're defined. We define a woman's worth by how desirable she is to a man. And how desirable she is to a man indicates how much control she can gain over his life, how much she can change him, how much she can browbeat him, how much she can make expecting you to fulfill that commitment. Once you do, she'll have other tasks, other assignments, and you don't realize you're being pulled into the quicksand. You have to nip that stuff in the butt. So she tries to get you to commit to call her tomorrow or at some specific time. If you don't have the strength to resist that, just say you'll do it and then don't. But the best thing to do is tell her you're busy or you'll try or you'll see and then make her sweat. The insecure woman with low self-esteem is more than likely to do anything you want her to do to get you to like her. The woman who is secure, confident, which are usually these Jordan Sparks type fatties or fuglies, you know what I'm talking about, uh, these women are very hard to break down. It's easier to get laid by a 9 or a 10 because 9s and 10s are completely insecure, completely paranoid because any imperfection is magnified by a 1,000. These are women who weigh 108 pounds in self-respect. 
use backhanded compliments to humiliate her at the same time that it sounds like you're doing something nice. And then she's pretty much putty in your hands because she wants to do anything she has to do to get you to treat her better. Uh, they, will, they will do anything when you get them in that position. When they are confident and secure, they'll do nothing and they will flaunt it. They will lord it over you. You're not getting what you want. Uh-uh, you know. But <laughs> a woman who is insecure and has low self-esteem, she'll pretty much do whatever you want. That's what you need to do. Calling a woman immediately, <laughs> immediately, you know, giving her what she wants like that, you can't do it. You can't. You can't and you shouldn't. It's that simple. So my question for you is simple, okay? Very simple. Do you have a problem with this? Is there a problem with this? I mean, look, it works. This is not a show that teaches people how to get married or how to walk hand on hand into the sunset. This is a show that generally is on the side of men, and we, on one segment of the program, teach guys how to get laid. The rest of the time, we just teach guys how to maintain the upper hand. Doesn't this fit right in? There's nothing wrong with this, is there? Can you do it? Do you have a hard time doing this? Let me know. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. There's no equal opportunity on this show. On this show, it's a dictatorship, and I run it. You are the man. Yes, I am. This is the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. What are you guys doing? Calling her back. Being reliable. Dependable. Women are whining about the fact that we don't call them. We don't call them fast enough. That's only if we're doing it right. Gino. Tom. Not much. Uh, I've been listening to your show for a long time, and I've been a good student for a while now. Only thing I haven't learned is... The backhand a compliment. I don't think I ever heard example. Is it possible to school me on that? Yeah, yeah. Backhanded compliments. The examples we generally give are you see a back you know what a backhanded compliment is, right? Not quite sure. Right. A backhanded compliment sounds like a compliment, but it's really a dig. Like, when you, one. like when you say to a woman, um, I don't care what anybody says, I think you're hot. <laughs> All right, I get it. Or maybe other guys feel differently, but I like a chick with a little extra meat on her bones. <laughs> I got you. All right, I got you. Well, I'll do it. I think I've been doing it for a while. I just didn't know it was a bad kind of thing. Yes, and, and the thing is, uh, it's great. They, they, they're bulletproof because she can't say you're not complimenting her. Exactly. Exactly. The I'll idea is to throw her off her game, to make her feel insecure. Very true. Tom, you're a genius. Love this. Keep it up. Gino, thank you. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Linda on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Good afternoon, Tom. Love your show. Keep up the good work. Thank I you. I have a gripe with you with regard to the I'll call you phrase. Men are always bitching about truth in advertising. I think men are very visually oriented. In other words, they want the woman to match the picture once they finally meet the woman. I think the opposite holds true for women. I think women are auditorily based. So we don't want you to say, I'll call you, when you have zero intention of calling us. We don't care what you want. The trick is for us to say we'll call you and then not actually do it. Yeah, but if you, if you have no intention of calling, why even bother going there? To make you feel insecure, like, why didn't we call you? And it works. Well, I do know that it works, but... but well, that's why. why. I mean, it's, it, because, you know, because it works. You get off on the power of it. You it works. You get off on the power of making her feel insecure. You are much more likely to have sex with me sooner if I make you feel insecure than if I compliment you and make you feel like a princess. I agree with you, but if that's why your intention to not see her again, why bother with that line? But uh, we don't know what our intention is. Uh, uh, you know, the the the, re the way men think, and this is something you should know, is that we don't know if we'll ever see you again. Um, certainly, if nothing better comes along, we might. If something better does come along, maybe we'll never call you again. 
Tom, wouldn't you agree with me that after like a day or two or so, if you really haven't called her back, you're really not going to call her back? I mean, come on, you're going to let two weeks go by and then... There's a nation, there is a nation of drunk dialers out there who would disagree with you. <laughs> come on, you've gotten those calls, haven't you? I suppose. Yeah, the, 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 have you ever had a call where you had to say to a man, do you know what time it is? <laughs> it's always after 11 p.m., isn't it? That's right, darling. <laughs> so, you see, you can't say for sure a guy's never going to call you again, because really, you've seen what guys' little black books are like. Women imagine that every woman in the little black book is hot. Yes. Uh, the reality is every woman there has a uh, a night depository. True, but I think, and if there's yeah, no uh, if there's no depository uh, conveniently located, you might need to drive a little bit to get to another one. I hear you, but I think if you guys were to stop with that phrase, then you could spend more time on finding the chicks that you really do want to spend time but with. But dear, we don't want to spend any time with you. We just want to have sex and get out. Spending well, time with you is a burden on us. I mean, I guess if you're loading up your bullpen to, you know. To, to take care of all those days where you need it, I mean, I guess your strategy works, but... But that's, I'm, again, dear, you're a 44-year-old female. I'm speaking as a man, and I'm speaking for the way men think. Hmm. And men have tried to use you this way if they haven't already succeeded, even without your knowledge. Well. I was watching an interview on the Today Show. I, I, why they had... Do you even know who... Well, you're 44, you might know. Do you know who Marlo Thomas is? Yes. She's the wife of Phil Donahue. Yes. And for some reason, she was doing an interview on the Today Show this week with young women who were in college. Okay. And there's Marlo, who by now has got to be 60-something. Right. Trying to, you know, connect with these young women. So she's asking them, what is hooking up? <laughs> and oh things like God. that. So anyway, one of the girls she was interviewing, who was like a senior in college, said that uh, she was going out with a boyfriend for eight months until she finally found out that he thought they were just hooking up? As, as are most men. But, that, are but they see, that's what I'm trying up. to tell you. you. You could very well have been one of those people. I could have been. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I, I've learned my lesson the hard way. But, but right. yes, I, I know this now. Right. But now, now think, see, you already know this, but you're 44 years old. Now let's take it to 24 years old. Yeah, you don't know it back then. You, you, you know, That's we're right. all into relationships. That's oh, right. He's so into me. That's and, right. Oh, he did this, that, and the other. So that's this right. And the other. So, so you see, you you really do agree with what I'm saying. I do agree that it works. I, I'm just saying, you know, if you guys bitch that you want truth in advertising on we your end with the no, social aspect, we I'm don't care. Saying, that's the whole point. Want truth in advertising I was liberated, dear. I was liberated the day I decided. I don't care what women do in their free time. I don't care if they have a MySpace page. I don't care if they're on Facebook. I don't care if they're on Yahoo Personals or Match.com or JDate. I don't care if they've got male friends. I don't care if they occasionally hook up with their high school sweetheart. I don't care. I don't care. There's no jealousy, no anger. And uh, if they don't have time to hook up with me, that's fine. I make a call to the bullpen. I bring somebody in for middle relief. <laughs> Well, I guess that it's for you liberating. In your life. You know, it, it would have worked at any stage, but I had an epiphany. <laughs> well, you've been burned one too many times. I well, guess four times you're out, huh? Well, uh, that's certainly the truth. <laughs> I feel you, Tom. I'm sorry you had to go through all that pain. Well, uh, dear, I, I'm not alone. I don't. Uh, I don't claim to be uh, a unique uh, individual. Uh, many of the men out there who enthusiastically endorse what I say. Yes. I've been through the same thing. I agree. I do see this happening. I agree. And so it's up to us to just use what works. Who cares about truth in advertising? We don't even care. We love fake boobs. 60% of American women color their hair. I mean, how much truth is out there anyway? Well, you want them attractive, don't you? Uh, darling, coloring your hair doesn't necessarily make you attractive. Well, for some it does. I mean, I well, guess if you have gray hair or whatever. Well, let me give you an example. I, I like chicks with dark or olive skin and dark hair. I don't want you in red hair or blonde hair. It does not go with olive skin. It just doesn't. Right. No, I agree. It does not necessarily make you more attractive. Right. No, I, you take a Jessica Alba or a Ava Longoria and put them with lighter color hair and it doesn't look They've like already done it. They've both done it. 
But by the same token, if you take um, Jessica Simpson or Britney Spears and you put it, leave them in brown hair, they look like a dish rag. I don't agree with that. You think they look attractive? You, that, that body I on Jessica know. Simpson, she can have green hair. It doesn't matter. Well, I don't know. She looks very, very plain and ordinary to me without that blonde hair. Again, you're not speaking as a man. Okay, if it works for you. What works for me is easy availability, easy on, easy off. You like the McDonald's up near Hanford, California. <laughs> easy in, easy out. <laughs> and and uh, open 24-7. That's all you and they are, are out for. It does work. I, I will give you that. Yes, definitely, if you're looking to fall in love... If you're looking to be like Dr. Neil Clark Warren with your 29 levels of compatibility, this is not going to work for you. <laughs> but but, but our listeners are not looking for that. Wouldn't you agree that most men at some point in their lives do want to you know, hook up with only something long term? Only because they don't know any better. So and I'm including myself your, in that list. Is it your advice that men should never? I'm saying that we'll certainly never get married. For, for yourself. I mean, you've already been there, done that. No, no, I'm for anyone. In general, for most for, men. For anyone. Your advice is to men to never get married? Never get married. Just have an arrangement. Don't even need an arrangement. All right. Well, I think I think the whole marriage thing is a whole female concoction anyway. Of course it is. <laughs> I mean, basically, it was originally, you know, created back in the day 2,000 years ago to protect the kids. I mean, basically, that's what it was for. So. Well, well, the wedding ring uh, symbolizes, and I'm not making this up, it symbolizes the cha the link in a chain, like you're chaining somebody down. No, it symbolizes eternity. No, ma'am. No. No? No. No, it symbolizes a link in a chain, and you're both wearing one, so you're linked together. Okay. That's where it comes from. Jewelry store ads will tell you it symbolizes eternity because they certainly don't have a vested interest in telling you it, 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 it's reminiscent of slavery. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you watch a De Beers ad on TV with all that uh, all that string music playing in it. And oh God, it just makes me cry gonna, every time I hear one of those. They're going to they're going to tell you that it's represents so eternity, but trust me, look it up, dear. Okay, I will. The wedding ring is uh, goes back to the days when uh, you know uh, people were being shackled for any number of reasons. <laughs> and this is just one more shackle that men don't need. Is that it? That's right. Wow, aren't you the uh, the unlocker of all the? <laughs> I'm the Abraham Lincoln. I'm the Abraham Lincoln of men. I'm I'm, I'm I've just made the uh, I've just made my Emancipation Proclamation. <laughs> Just don't get killed while you're at it. As opposed to, to Dean J. D'Amelio, who had the constipation proclamation after he got off the Atkins duck. <laughs> That's funny. Hi, dear. You're a riot, Tom. I love you so much. Why? Long time listener. Why? Thank you. See that? She loves me, even though I say all that stuff. She loves me anyway. It, it proves my point. It proves my point. Inga, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey, this is Tom. Oh, did you want to talk to Tom? Yeah, I called for Tom. I'd like to speak with him regarding his views on dating. All right. Hold on. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas show. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Inga, the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. It's Inga. How are you? Great. Well, you know, I'm a first time listener, first time caller. Yeah. Um, I am so sorry to say, but I I, I agree to your views on dating, and I feel as if your views have got to be ten to fifteen years old. Well, they Women work. are no longer desperate. Uh, darling, and, and the, trust the me. Have trust places. me when I tell you, darling. The fat and fugly women. Uh, those women, of course, are all fat and sassy, and they're all that. 
Uh, but when it comes to really hot chicks, they're as insecure as ever. Their no, self-esteem. I'm a hot chick. I am an actress, print model, and writer, and I am not desperate. Dude, there are exceptions to every rule. By choice. Even a broken Please clock. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. On women, because not all of us are desperate. Well, again, no and one you know, said all of you are. Just most of you. Sexuality right now. Men are learning how it is and how it feels. Uh, don't be using any is, language. Don't be using any language you can't use on the air, dear. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. You could beep it out. But at the same time, your views are 10 to 15 years old. Well, dear, they work, and you hear all the men who call in here who say that uh, well, they do what I recommend, and that uh, it works. They get more yeah, ass than a toilet seat. They say it all the time. It's been hurt a million times by women. Doesn't matter. And, and I seem, I, I sense bitterness. Doesn't matter. Uh, you know and what? That is so unfair. Most men out there, most men out there have had their hearts carved out by a woman at some time or another. That's the bottom line. Did your dad treat your mother that way? Is that where you? I don't really. It, it's really irrelevant. No, don't preach that to the young youth. Oh, I'm going to continue. The young youth. How about the old youth? You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna chase them into homosexuality. No, I'm not. <laughs> are you insane? I'm not chasing anybody into homosexuality. My you men are. have sex with women. And they're happy with what they're getting. And they report all the time. Here, let's get Jesse. Are you, are you well endowed? Is that why? <laughs> well, why, you didn't complain when I had you that night when you were blitzed. Hey, uh, Jesse, what did you want to say to Inga? You can't afford me. You don't know if Jesse... You, you can't Jesse's afford not, me, honey. You want to... Oh, please. I can buy and sell you. I can put you up on eBay. Oh, no. No, honey, they don't come like me. But change your view. Hang on a second. Hey, Jeff... Jeff, do you hear what Inga's saying here? Like hey, watch your mouth. Next time I'm hanging up. Tom. Yes, Jeff. What do you think about what Inga is saying? She's she's just completely whacked. You just need to hang up on her. She's crazy. And I got to tell you, not only does this work, it's like the ultimate hookup tool. I was out a few years ago at a sushi bar on Sunset, having a good time on New Year's Eve, just hanging out with some of my friends. I go out on the patio, and there's this dude with huge hair, and I'm like, nice hair, guy. And this girl comes up to me, and she's like, you know, who do you think you are to, you know, put his hair down? I look at her, I said, who the F asked you your opinion? Her mouth was wide open. While it was wide open, I started kissing her. She started kissing me back yep. right there and then. And then she looked at me. She kissed me for like three minutes, and then she looked at me, and she's like, I don't know why I'm kissing you. You're a complete jerk. That is and why. I said, well, that is why she's kissing you. <laughs> I don't know why I'm kissing you either, but, you know, it works. It's just, it's the ultimate hookup tool. Just go out. I mean, you could do this on, like, one of your shows when you're doing a live audience. Just have some guys go up to girls and just talk talk nasty to them. I mean, just put them down. Put their purse down. Put their shoes down. Let me tell you, let me tell you one of the most effective lines I use when I'm met in public by women, and they, they know what I believe, Okay. Obviously, you'd have to have a radio show to use this one, or you would have to have had a conversation like this with a woman. I've had women come up to me in public and confront me, and they say, Why do you think all women are gold diggers? And I look them straight in the eye, and I say, I don't think all women are gold diggers. Just the attractive ones. Yeah, and they and rightfully so. I mean, well, but see, then what happens is, then the woman thinks you're saying she's ugly. Which, of course, in an indirect way, you are. Uh, but it does. I mean, I you know how many of these women end up sitting in my lap before the end of the night? I, I don't even. I don't even want to be your lap. It's probably you probably have a rug burn on. No, no, I don't want you in my lap. But uh, so Inga, you're you're just so you're so hostile. <laughs> where did, I, where I did Inga go? I mean, it's it's got to have something to do with insecurity and and just leveling the playing field. But it works. I mean. Well, I'm going to continue being, uh, uh, you know, mean, nasty. Uh, I'm going to give backhanded compliments. I'm going to continue to be unreliable, undependable, and unpredictable. And I will continue to be the most desired male that any of these women know. Or you could be a computer dork and send flowers and then tell me how much tail you got. Ah! Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Okay. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. What I would do if I was getting married is I would say, you know, to love, honor, and cherish until you become a fat pig, in which case I'm gone. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show. 
one 800 800 top Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. I don't understand all these complaints from women out there. We don't call. Men don't call. We say we're going to call, and we don't. Ladies, get a clue. We either are not into you, or we're just uh, playing you so that uh, we throw you off your game. I recommend the guys continue to do it because it works like a charm. Mitchell, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mitchell. Let me start by saying, dude, you are a pimp. I love that you have the balls to just say things to other people that nobody else would dare say. And it just it just slaps them in the face with reality. That's awesome. Thank you. So, um, all right, I was, raised, I was raised a Mormon, and I was raised to be, you know, to have good manners and open the door for everybody and be really nice and really sweet and really polite. And I've been listening to you for a year and a half, and I'm... I'm working toward, you know, being a pimp like you are, but it's it's hard to uh, to convince myself to start delivering these, as you call them, backhanded compliments. And I've I've done so, just like okay, what would I say normally? And then basically abandon that completely and say just the opposite, be completely rude and think to myself, I can't believe I'm saying this, but but like you said, it works. They're just they they can't tear themselves away from you. Like they'll just cater to you the rest of the night. So you have to just keep working on that. It's almost like a, uh, it's almost like an exercise. You have to continue practicing at it. Yeah, and I do. You know, I'm, I'm practicing, but uh, it's it's difficult, and uh, it's. I mean, like I said, whenever I've tried it, it definitely works. So I'm giving it a shot. I'm trying to live the like this 101, and every time I'm, I've adhered to it, it works. It works like a charm. Hey, thanks. Uh, blow me up, Tom. There you go, Mitchell. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Show me the way, brother. <laughs> I, you know, when I first started listening to your show about a month ago, I was like, mm, I sort of agreed with you, and I sort of didn't because, like your last caller, I've always been considered the nice guy. I've got so many female friends. None of them ever want to touch me. They're like, oh, don't worry. You'll find somebody someday. You're, you're right there. You're just like, you're too good to be alone. And I'm thinking to myself, well, why aren't you with me? You'll find you're a nice guy, blah, blah, blah. There's a bunch of bull snizzle. Yeah, but what they're doing is they're saying that stuff to you so you will stop asking them out on a date. Yeah, and so... They're trying to throw you off. So, so I don't, I don't understand that... Now, now I've always wanted, my New Year's resolution was to start being meaner. And my friend came up to me the other day, he's like, how come you're still being nice? And my friend Rob, and he says, why are you still being nice? I said, I don't know. Uh, it's still not getting me anywhere. I'm still not doing anything. Nobody's interested in me in the slightest sense of the word. I call him back when I'm supposed to. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. That's so why. My friend, my friend Danielle was sitting right with there with them, and she says, "You reason to see the reason I have Danielle has her arms around me for her? I'm mean to her. I don't give her what she wants." And then she nodded her head, said, "That is the exact reason why I'm with you." And I was like, "What the world is going on here?" My upside down. I said, "What about Tom Likas? He'll know what to do." So I decided to call your show and show me the way, Tom. Well, uh, your friends are onto something. Treat women like crap, and they respect you. Treat them with dignity. Treat them with respect, and they walk on you. And Chris, tell me that's not true. Oh, it's very true, Tom. I, I can't think of an instance where I've only had one serious relationship, and it would just it came down the whole religion thing. But other than that, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, that's exactly what happens. So uh, you need to do the opposite of anything your instincts tell you to do. If your instincts say send flowers, don't. Right. If your instincts say take it to a nice dinner, don't. If your instincts say, um, you know, tell her how beautiful she looks, don't. Right, right. So I guess now it's defeating my conscience. That's always been the big problem. How do I defeat my conscience other than... Do you feel guilty? Let me ask you a question. Sure. When you go to the bathroom and you use a urinal, uh -huh. do you feel guilty if you don't call it the next day? 
and say, oh, my God, what relief. That was so great. Oh, man. Do you feel guilty? Hell no. Well, that's what I'm talking about. These chicks, you have to think of them as utilities. Well, what I did once is that there was a, a girl and... She was, she's my friend, or was my friend anyway. Well, you got to stop and, with the female and, friends. That's and, that's rule number one. Well, she, we, we were supposedly building towards something. And oh, stop at the building towards Gotcha. Not even. And, and have you noticed all the jerks out there and the women you know, all your female friends all telling you about all these jerks they're dating? Oh, yeah. Oh, he's a jerk. It's like, I want a nice guy. And I'm thinking, nice guy right here, sitting right here. Right. But it's not you. They, they say that, but they continue having sex with jerks. Yeah. So, you see, you have to take a cue. What did I do one time? And, and then I started realizing is that this girl was like, can I dance with you? And I said, no. And I love to dance. So I'm usually, yeah, all right. Oh, okay. so you gotta... like, she came back to me and like, by the way, I said, no. unless, you, unless you like going to gay bars, being a white man liking to dance, not a good thing. No. No. Oh, well, I do. I, I like I like swing and ballroom and... and oh, my I, goodness. No, you're, you're not serious, are you? I am. I, I love doing do you, that. Do you stuff. watch Grey's Anatomy, too? What's that? Do you ever watch Grey's Anatomy? No. Do you own a kitty cat? No. What kind of pets do you own? Uh, I have no pets. No pets? No pets. I, I'd have a dog if I could, but... Who who won the last uh, heavyweight bout, the Oscar De La Hoya fight? Who won that? I wasn't heavyweight. Who won the uh, Oscar De La Hoya fight? I uh, don't remember. What do you mean you don't remember? I don't remember. Did you ever know? What's that? Yeah, because I know it passing by, but I don't watch boxing. So I, I How about really I just ask you this way? Did Oscar De La Hoya win? <laughs> Who did he fight? This is what I'm talking about, Chris. You gotta start acting more like a man. I mean, a straight man. Gotcha. Straight men like sports. I do. I I I I, I um. I don't mean playing sports. badminton with the girls. I ba mean basketball and baseball. I watch that. You watch and you know about them. Yeah. You watch them with other men. Yeah. Really? Who are these guys? You know them from uh, math club in high school? Where do you know these guys who like to watch basketball? Well, one one used to be my roommate, and we went to high school together. And so he was a big, like, Giants fan, and so we'd watch it, you know, and everything. And uh, I I don't really have a baseball team anymore, but, you know, I used to be like a Dodgers fan growing up here in Las Vegas. And uh, I just I hadn't been able to follow it because of my work and school schedules. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I try to follow it the best I can. And your name is not George? No. George McFly? <laughs> no. You know, you sound like him. Do I really? Yes. Oh. That whole, well, George McFly was very insecure. Why, yes. Yes, he was. That would partially be me, too. I know. Oh. You need to have the woman be insecure and you be secure. Right. And if you stop worrying about falling in love and having relationships and working towards the future. Right. And if you don't care whether they date other guys or they have MySpace pages or who's texting them and all that stuff that guys worry about. Mm -hmm. And just uh, consider them like that urinal I was telling you about. Right. You'll be a very happy man. That's right. All right, Tom, thank you for your uh, advice. I will put back on my radio here and continue okay. to listen. And, All right. And, uh, and I'll, I'll call you and let you know how, how I progress in the that world. All right, George. Thank you. I mean, Chris. 1-800-516-1041. Did he say ballroom dancing? Ballroom dancing. I think George McFly was into that, too. Just checking. Yes. <laughs> How about he takes the girls to the mall shop? Where they tell him about all the guys they're actually having sex with. I'm tired of these jerks. Where's a nice guy? Well, I'm right here. Oh, you'll find the right person for you one day. <laughs> 
Textbook case. Textbook. Believable. 1-800-5-800-TOP is our telephone number. Oh, here's another one. Sam, you're on the top like a show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Sam. All right. Now, I empathized a lot with the with the college before this guy, um, and I think I've had somewhat of an, an, of an epiphany with this last caller. Um, see, I've, I've, been, I've always treated girls real nice and opened doors and been real kind and sweet and sincere. And what happens to me is I really start hating them eventually, um, almost immediately after the relationship starts. And at that point is when I become insincere and I become a jerk. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And the um, and the chick loves me. She loves me for real, and she wants the most long relationship for the rest of our lives. And about that time, I leave, and I find someone else, and there's always someone there because they know me, and I've been around, and I've been with a bunch of different girls. So I think what I need to start doing is, I guess, stopping, stop talking to these chicks like I'm trying to fall in love, but it's just hard to convince myself that, too. Well, Sam, if you, uh, here, how about the fact that what you're doing will never work? Will that convince you? Well, it's starting to convince me real quick. It will quick. never, ever work. I agree. You know when it'll work? When you're over 35 and you meet a woman with more than 100,000 miles on the odometer, the kind of woman who plays ads online saying, I've had my fun, don't want to play games, don't like liars. Of course, they spent their whole lives dating liars <laughs> and loving it. Then they look at the calendar and realize, my God, my eggs are getting up. Well, you know, and, be, and, as, and as soon as I become the liar, as soon as I become the ass in the relationship, um, it, it's like it's like I all the other girls around me immediately grab the face. It's like, well, that's it's, right. It's now. Uh, it, so you've it's seen it point, work. It's so, easy, it's so easy to move on at that point, but. And then, then I'm stuck back in the beginning, looking and looking and saying to myself, "Well, maybe I should, maybe I should really start looking something to hold on to or something like that." But it's, it's really starting to forget stick. about holding on to anything. So just don't even hold on to anything. Just not even start. What about the in and out? I, I'll tell you what. There's only, you know what? In life, there's only one thing you should hold on to. That's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likish. And, and as soon as I become the liar, as soon as I become the ass in the relationship, um, it, it's like it's like I all the other girls around me immediately grab the face. It's like, well, that's it's, right. It's now. Uh, it, so it, you've seen point, it work. It's so, easy, it's so easy to move on at that point, but at, and then then I'm stuck back in the beginning, looking and looking and saying to myself, well, maybe I should. Maybe I should really start looking something to hold on to or something like that. But it's, it's really starting to... Forget about holding on to anything. So just don't even hold on to anything. Just not even start. What about the in and out? I, I'll tell you what. There's only... You know what? In life, there's only one thing you should hold on to. That's it. <laughs> you know what I mean. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.